welcome uh, to this lecture on acute stroke brought to you by the comprehensive critical care course of the Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine. In this talk, I am going to cover acute ischemic stroke and within that the assessment and suitability for revascularization, neuroimaging and hemodynamic and critical care issues. Then I am going to cover acute intracranial hemorrhage, the initial assessment and neuroimaging, how to manage the blood pressure and what the role of neurosurgery is. And then finally, I will touch upon acute fibroachnoid hemorrhage, the initial assessment and neuroimaging, the initial blood pressure management, the role of surgery versus neuroradiological interventions and the management of complications. So without much ado, let us start with the first case. This is a 60 year old lady, diabetic, uh, 60 year old male, diabetic hypertensive who presented to the emergency room with weakness of the right arm and face with speech difficulty. What is the next most appropriate step? So as usual, the first thing to do would be to ensure immediate resuscitation, look at the airway, breathing, ensure oxygenation, look at the circulation, ensure appropriate blood pressure, not too high, not too low. Do a quick neurological evaluation. In the emergency room, it may involve doing one of the pre-hospital stroke scales. In hospital, it would involve doing what is called the National Institute of Health Stroke Scale, abbreviated as NIHSS. You may need to do certain lab immediately and of this, the mandatory, one mandatory lab is the blood sugar. Then once this has been done and the patient's stability has been ensured, the next thing would be to do a plain CT of the brain or a magnetic resonance imaging diffusion weighted. Now like I said, it is important to be able to identify stroke early and for this, the 8 Ds of the American Heart Association stroke chain of survival are very important. The um, scale which is used is called FAST, so face, arms, speech and time as can be seen in this cartoon. So in the face, you look for deviation of the angle of mouth, any facial asymmetry. In the arms, you see if there is any arm drift or if they are not able to do certain simple things with their arms. Then check the speech to see if there is any slurring or speech difficulty and most importantly, you need to measure the time of onset. As